Hey everyone, welcome back to another Cytobytes tutorial. Today we are going to be tackling the most cited flow cytometry paper in the last decade, Flowsum. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by the sheer number of markers in your flow cytometry experiments, and with modern flow and mass cytometry, we're talking 30 plus colors now, the permutations of possible combinations is a lot of manual gating. Finding those differences can take a lot of time, and unless you envy Liam Neeson, searching for his lost daughter again and again, the only special set of skills you're going to have is drawing boxes on a screen, a little bit of carpal tunnel, and a sense of despair. Or we can get a head start and take advantage of clustering. As you might have been able to tell from the title of this video, specifically we're going to be clustering a flow sum, and we're going to take just a little bit of the time to explain how it clusters. And then we're going to walk you through the basics of using the software to get you started exploring your data. Flowsum stands for Flow Self-Organizing Map, and it's a fantastic visualization technique that helps you make sense of all that complex data. It's designed to give you a clear overview of how all your markers are behaving across all your cells, and can even help you detect cell subsets you might otherwise miss with traditional methods. So how does this magic happen? Flowsum works through a clear four-step process. Let's break it down. Step one reading and pre-processing the data. First up, you feed Flowsum your raw FCS files. The algorithm takes all your individual samples and combines them to one massive data matrix. This is super important because it trains one model for your entire experiment, making it easy to compare different samples. During this stage, your data can also be compensated, transformed, and crucially scaled. Scaling ensures that each marker contributes equally to the analysis. Step two, building the self-organizing map. This is the core flow sum, a self-organizing map, or SOM. It's a type of artificial neural network used for clustering and dimensional reduction. Imagine a grid of interconnected nodes. Flow sum trains this grid using your cytometry data. Each node on the grid represents a cluster of cells that are similar to each other in terms of their marker's expression. What's brilliant about flow sum is how it visualizes these nodes. It uses star charts. Each point on the star represents a different marker and the length of that point indicates the average intensity of that marker for all the cells assigned to that specific node. This allows you to quickly see the expression profile of each cell cluster. You can even use pie charts to compare these clusters with traditional manual gates. Step three, building a minimal spanning tree. After the SOM is built, Flowsum takes those nodes and connects them in a minimal spanning tree, or MST. This creates a tree-like structure where nodes that are most similar from each other are connected. It's a bit like a family tree for your cell populations. This visualization is actually quite similar to what you might see in another popular tool, Spade. But Flowsum is significantly faster, as it doesn't need to subsampling stage, which Spade uses. Here's where we get a little geeky for those interested, as this is a neural network. You have all your events, and they exist in high dimensional space. If you have 30 or 40 parameters, then you have 30 or 40 dimensions. But we'll show this in two dimensional space, just for simplicity. First, we start with a grid. Each node is connected to a max four other nodes. A data point is taken, and the distance is calculated to the closest node. The node, and thus the grid, stretches to the events. The magnitude of that movement is called the learning rate. Then, the neighbor nodes also move with it. The closer to the first node, the more it moves. We then repeat this, again and again, until the grid has stretched and morphed to all events. And that is your SOM. The minimal spanning tree is then made from the nodes where the connections are a max of two. Step four, metaclustering. Finally, FlowSOM performs a metaclustering step. While the SOM itself creates many small clusters in the nodes, the metaclustering of these groups of these nodes into smaller, more manageable number of larger clusters, which often correspond to the major cell types you're looking for by hierarchical clustering. 
This is essentially like an automated gating procedure. Now that you know how it works, let's get into using it. There are a variety of commercial software that have FlowSum as a plugin, or variations of SOMs built in. But the NIH just slashed my budget, and I can't afford any of those. So let's do it the free way. In this case, we'll be using R. If you're new to R, don't worry. You don't need to know how to program or know what a for loop is to use FlowSum. We'll be doing what we call scripting, and no real programming knowledge is required. You will need to go download R, though, which you can grab from the rproject.org. And a reminder for Windows users, you will need to grab R tools as well. And while not technically necessary, if you are new to R, I highly recommend using an IDE, like RStudio, which we'll be using in this example. As always, I'll have a link below to all the code so you can copy and paste, but you can always pause the video as we go as well. Now we're gonna jump into RStudio. This first line here is just gonna to check to see if Bioconductor is installed. If it's not, it'll install it. If it is, it'll do nothing. Then we're gonna install FlowSum from Bioconductor. Depending on if you've done other flow work already in R, this might take a little bit longer for some people to install as it has to install more dependencies. Next, we're gonna load our clean FCS files. If you wanna learn some quality control cleanup steps, check out our data quality cleanup with Peacock tutorial video. It's pretty cool. This line next here just applies the compensation from the machine you use. The default is stored in the spill channel. If you're doing this in Flojo or FCS, just make sure you know if your data is compensated as this is important and a step further down following this tutorial. Then we're gonna transform the data. In this case, I'm using a logical, but you can use rsnh, also valid. Now we're gonna load flow sum, and we're gonna set a seed. It's important to set a seed as there are random numbers used in parts of the software. And by setting a seed, you allow for reproducibility when you publish, so others can generate the same tree as you. The number doesn't really matter, but many people will often use the date to run the analysis on. Some people have superstitions for getting good data, and some people just have favorite numbers. The next three steps from FlowSOM, as a reminder, are build the SOM, build the tree, and then do the meta clustering. Now these steps can be done individually, but FlowSOM has a function that does all three of these steps conveniently as a function called FlowSOM. So we're gonna give it our flow frame containing our flow data. Now FlowSOM wants compensated data, but we already compensated. So we're gonna tell FlowSOM function to not compensate it by setting the compensate flag to false. We're gonna do the same with transform and scale as well. Then we're gonna tell it which column markers to use, and then we'll set the dimensions of the grid and set the number of meta clusters. Now, some of you are asking, how many clusters should I pick? What size grid should I use? And those are fantastic questions. Luckily, Sophie created a great video you can go watch and get the answer to those. But for us, we're gonna go back and click Run. When it's done, you can plot it with the plot stars function.
you did it. Easier than you thought, right? That's the hard part done. From here, you can explore the clusters, each star showing the expression patterns for markers. You can progress further in R. You can apply these meta clusters to a new map or a Tisney, export or import the SOM into some other software, explore differentially expressed clusters, find interesting nodes. The last of those two, I plan on making a follow-up video to walk you through how to do that. But we're trying to keep these videos shorter and more focused. I'll have a link to the original, highly cited flow SOM paper in the description, a link to the vignette for some extra troubleshooting, and of course, a link to the code that I used. That's all for this set of Bytes episode. If you found this helpful, you can hit the like button, subscribe for more cytometry insights. That also lets other people find the videos and the channel. And do let us know in the comments what other topics you'd like us to cover. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep your experiments flowing, and we'll see you on the next run.